Modern web applications have moved on from serving files stored in a neat hierarchy on a web server. And whilst brute forcing has become a lot faster, we need an effective way of discovering routes, not just single directories and files using recursion. Kite Runner is a tool that enables us to do this. It's both fast and can be used to discover routes and endpoints in modern applications. It also comes with custom word lists collected from a variety of sources, which is a crucial part of our discovery process. So today we'll run through how to get this tool set up on your machine and get started with some scans against a set of APIs. You'll then be able to use this tool in your next web app pen test or against your next bug bounty targets. As always, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's dive in. So first up, let's run through how we can get Kite Runner set up and running on your Kali instance. So I'm just going to come to asset notes slash Kite Runner. So this is the GitHub repository. And if we scroll down, it looks like there are a couple of different ways to install. So we can download the latest release, which is probably the easiest way. And that's what we're going to do in a second or we can build from source. And if you're using Arch, you can use Yay to install Kite Runner as well. So if we scroll back up and come to releases, and we see the list of releases here, and these are for different architectures. So if you don't know what architecture you're running, you can just come back to the command line and just do tpkg dash dash print architecture. And you can see that I'm running AMD 64. So I will grab the one that says Kite Runner 1.0.2 Linux AMD 64.tar.gz. And I'll just click on it, click Save, and give it a second to download. So I'm back here in a folder called Kite Runner that I just created. So I'm just going to move dot dot slash Kite Runner, the file that we downloaded, into this folder. And then I'm going to unzip it so we can just do tar-xf and the file name and this will extract the file and as you can see we have this binary called kite runner. So now that we have the binary I'm actually just going to move it to my opts folder where I keep most of my tools. So sudo move kr to slash opt kr and then also I'm going to add a link so that I don't have to type slash opt kr to access it every time I want to run it. I just want to be able to type kr and have it run kite runner. So sudo ln s opt kr and then we're going to put it in user local bin kr. So now when I type kr from anywhere in my file system, it's going to execute this binary. Next up, we can look at some help. So if we just run it as it is, we can see some available commands. And then I think if we just do kr scan dash dash help, it will give us the breakdown of help for that particular command. The help is actually really, really good and has a lot of functionality. So I recommend you take a little bit of time to glance through and have a look to see what different flags there are and what they mean. So now we actually want to run Kite Runner against a set of APIs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my labs and items and sudo docker compose up. And if you've been following our live streams, you'll be fairly familiar with this application. And you'll know that it has a ton of API endpoints and lots of them are vulnerable to common attacks. So to start with, I want to look at what word lists are available. So kr word lists and then list, whoops, word list list. And you can see we have the alias and the file name and the source and how large it is, the file size, and if it's cached or not. The one that jumps out is the API routes. So this is what we want to discover because we're going to be attacking a set of APIs. We want to be able to discover what routes are available to us so that we can go ahead and assess them. But there are plenty of word lists in here for you to get started with. So our basic scan will look something like this, kr scan, http colon slash slash localhost dash a and the list that we want to use. And as you can see, we're getting quite a lot of results already. And some of them coming up in red because they're 500s, some of them coming up 403s, 404s, etc. We'll give that a second to run, and then we'll take a closer look. 
So now our scan is complete, we've found that a lot of them come back as 500s and we need to think to ourselves, what do these endpoints do? Are they authenticated? Do they require a parameter or some kind of data? Is it just because at the moment we're only looking at GET requests? And what we can do is we can come in and take a closer look. So for example, we'll just copy this, paste this into our browser, and we get access denied, this endpoint is accessible only from localhost. So unless we have something like server-side request forgery, we can maybe take that out of our scope, but add it to our notes for later. And then we also have API slash items, and then we have this trending, so this came back as 500. And we can see that we just get a server error for this. But maybe if we do just slash items, we get cannot get items. So this is giving us an indication of the structure of the APIs, even if we don't have specific endpoints to play with just yet. Now, because this is a lot of results to filter through, I'm actually going to run the same attack again. And all I'm going to do is add ignore length and ignore the length of 24. So all of these 500s should be filtered out. Okay, so now this is done. And if we scroll up, we can see that we got this 200 okay. So let's take a quick look at this. And we get a ton of data back. So this is an interesting finding and something that we should definitely dive into. We also see some authenticate and registration endpoints that we might want to take a closer look at. And we can see that the common structure is slash API, and then we have slash users, the root slash dev slash admin and slash items as well. So doing this manually with some brute force tool and just relying on recursion might not lead to the same results because slash API slash users might just give a 404 not found, whereas slash API slash users slash something else might give a result. And this highlights the fact that we can't just go directory by directory or file by file down the chain. We actually need to think about the full path or the full route to be able to get results. And also looking at the content length again, a lot of these are probably false positives. So here we have a slash API slash users slash refresh token. And you can see that the length is 26. And this is similar to a lot of other similar endpoints. And if we take a quick look at this, we can get user not found. So once again, we can ignore content length 24 and 26. And we don't need to wait for this to finish entirely, but you can see that again, we're filtering down the results even more so that we can start looking at endpoints that are actually meaningful. And then we can start also moving on to things like post requests, put requests, delete requests, etc. So that's it for this video. Once again, you can join us on live stream on Tuesdays where we do loads of web app hacking and practical API hacking too. You can also catch the past live streams over on YouTube under the live tab. Once again, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.